So one thing is, for instance, well, let's take a linear learner. Well, that's you know the basic thing, part of the course, you always need to have that, like a logistic regression or regression model or a linear classifier, right? So what you can then do is you can, for instance, train multiple hyperparameters, multiple loss functions and regularization and all of that at the same time by streaming things through. And in the end, well, you can do all your model selection and so on, and this automatically fits and models the right problem. So, and compared to, well, the best alternative, which is the yellow and the orange curve, our curves are on the blue and the gray one. This is just for different data sets, so these, these, these are apples to apples comparisons. And what you can basically see is that depending on how much time you're willing to invest and how much money you're willing to spend, we're quite a bit cheaper and we're quite a bit faster. Okay. Now, okay, linear learners and, well, the numbers on the left simply show you that, yeah, it works the same, right? Um, now, for factorization machines, again, remember the plot that I told you before, we want to be in the ideal situation where that green dot is, is level, right? This is exactly what's happening there. It's basically, you know, over a number of machines and therefore billable time in hours, as you get, you know, fewer machines, so as you get, as you throw more machines at it, the cost doesn't really go up, but of course it goes faster. So this is in a way the ideal scenario that you want to have. Now, of course, you can also do unsupervised learning like k-means clustering. Okay, again, the question, why would you bother with k-means? Yeah, because everybody needs it. And k-means sounds easy, right? I mean, it's been around for like 20 years, but making sure that it always works reliably, that it never breaks, right? This is the difference between writing a NIPS paper and actually deploying this. And so what we did is we built something that is accurate in terms of the objective function, requires a single pass, and can be efficiently tuned. And so we compare it to a lot of other things that don't quite do this. And if you look at the throughput, this is rather a lot better for not just 10 clusters, but also 100 and 1,000 and so on. And the key point is you never see this red failed note on the, on the middle column where it says SageMaker. This is the really important thing for the practitioner. They would quite often be very comfortable in paying maybe 10% more and making sure that their thing doesn't break. I mean, this is why we all have a car insurance, right? Because, and you know, we pay money for it, right? But we pay money for it in order to make sure that it really always performs. This is exactly what makes things hard in practice.